Hello everyone, I'm back with another RenPy tutorial today, and this one um, we're going to do a pretty simple uh, UI customization trick where I'm going to show you how to create a custom mouse cursor in your game, and later on, uh, be sure you stick around for the whole video because I'm going to show you how to do an animated cursor as well. So we're going to do a couple of cool tricks in this, and they are very, very simple to pull off. Um, a lot simpler than I thought they would be, and I've just learned this um, just in the last couple of days, so really should have taken the time to do this earlier. Um, so first things first, um, I'm going to show you how where to put your graphics first of all, or where I put them anyway. You can put them pretty much anything in your game file, but to keep things organized, I recommend putting them in the GUI, the GUI uh, directory. So you can see I've got my um, RenPy uh, open, and if I click open directory GUI, then it'll open my GUI direct, uh, directory. And I've got a series of images in here. So my main one that I'm going to use is just called mouse-cursor.png. Uh, you don't see the file extension, but there it is, PNG file. And then over here, I have all of these um, uh, animation frames. So mouse-anim1, mouse-anim2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And those are for my animated cursor that we're going to use later on. And again, I just got all this put in my GUI folder. You could create a subfolder there if you use a different... Um, different mouse cursors just to keep things nice and organized, but I just put them in my uh, in my main folder there and that should work okay. So um, our project is pretty much as we left it in the last video. I changed the dialogue a little bit when I was doing the um, uh, speech bubbles just to get a, uh, a YouTube thumbnail. Um, but again, pretty much right where we left it. And, oh, you can see uh, one more thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, the game uses the system mouse cursor by default, so whatever you have it set as in your operating system, that's how it looks uh, throughout the game. So no changes, everything is uh, just, as, just as it looks with everything else. But again, if you want to customize the look and feel of your game, it can really, really help set it apart by using a custom mouse cursor, which we are going to do now. Um, so I would normally recommend putting uh, the code that we're about to add in a different uh, file, uh, such as maybe in GUI.RPY is probably where I would put it. Um, but I'm just going to put it in the main script file for now because it's relatively simple just to keep everything uh, together for the moment. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to define a, a configuration variable. So we're going to say define config.mouse equals... And then we're going to put these empty curly braces. So what this is doing is this is creating an empty variable, and it's a very specific data type called a dictionary. I don't think that I've covered dictionaries in a previous video, at least not in depth. I'll probably do that pretty soon, do another general Python uh, tutorial and show you kind of how these work. Um, but they work a lot like an actual dictionary um, that you use. So whenever you use a dictionary, uh, you look up a word, which we would call a key. And then it has a value, which would be the definition of the word. So if you wanted to look up the word mouse in the dictionary, you would look up mouse, the key, and then it would have a definition, the value that would tell you different definitions of a mouse. And dictionaries in Python work much the same way. So basically they are key value pairs and the keys and values can be anything you want. Like if you are designing a, a website, you could use them to maybe tie a user ID, like a unique user ID, to a specific user's name. So you wouldn't want to store everybody by name because more than one person might have the same name, right? So you would do a unique user ID and then tie that to the person's name. So if you need to look up a person, you would look it up by user ID, then retrieve the name and uh, use that. So for something a little bit more RenPy specific, you might do this as part of an inventory system where your key could be an inventory item and the value could be the description of that item. And that's a little bit more like a real world uh, dictionary. Again, an item key, and then a definition, the description of that key. Um, so this is how we're going to keep track of our mouse, uh, our different mouse cursors. But for right now, we're going to leave it empty. Um, from what I understand, uh, RenPy kind of populates this automatically. So it doesn't normally store this config variable because it uses the system one by default. So this is why we have to define this because this does not exist in your code right now. It just uses your system uh, uh, mouse cursor. So we're going to create that empty uh, dictionary, and then we're going to start adding to it. So we're going to say define config.mouse, and we're going to use a list variable. This would be called an array in other programming languages, but in Python we call it a list. And uh, we're going to use a single string variable in here, and we're going to call that default. So basically this is telling you 
what the purpose of this cursor is, when you should use it. This is the default cursor. So if nothing else is defined for the specific cursor, it's going to default to this one. And we're going to set that equal to another list. And inside of that list, we're going to create another data type called a tuple, which I am almost positive we haven't used yet, at least not directly. Um, so we define a tuple by putting it inside of just regular parentheses. And a tuple is kind of like a list. It basically stores a series of values. They can be numbers, strings, like whatever you want. Even extra tuples or lists can be in there. Uh, but the main component of a tuple or the main uh, uh, defining characteristic of a tuple is they are immutable, meaning that you can't change the values once they're set. Like you can go back in and change it in code, but you can't change it programmatically. It'll throw an error if you try to change the values of a tuple. Um, so this is used for very important variables that you know aren't going to change. For instance, the uh, dimensions of your game. Um, so like the, you know, 1920 by 1080 screen size um, would be stored as a tuple because that is an important variable that you know is never going to change. And this is kind of the same way. We're not going to change our mouse cursors um, within the game, um, our definitions. So they have to be stored as a tuple. And we're going to pass three values into it. The first one is going to be the location of the graphic that we're going to use. So ours is going to be in our GUI folder. And then uh, the name of the cursor, which is, oh shoot, what did I call it? Hang on a second. I forgot the name. Oh, mouse-cursor.png. All right. That was pretty close. Mouse-cursor.png. And then we're going to separate these values by commas, just like we would uh, normally using a list. And the next two values it's going to expect are the X and Y offset. So uh, you can put different numbers in here that will offset the cursor by a certain number of pixels. And we are not going to use the offset, but it still needs those numbers. So we're just going to put 0, 0. But if your graphics are, um, if the center is in a weird spot, you might have to use the offset to make it look correctly. That'll just take a little bit of experimentation. But again, if you use uh, somebody else's cursor, it should have the origin point set correctly. So you can just put 0, 0, and it should work for you. And that is all you have to do. So now, whenever we go back in there, um, it's going to use the default mouse cursor. Instead of being the system cursor, uh, it's going to be uh, whatever our new one is. So let's go back to our game real quick, and we will check that out. And there we go. Now we've got our new cursor. Uh, this is actually kind of cool. It's kind of see-through, which might be a little bit annoying, but it's kind, of a, it's kind of a neat effect, though. And yeah, no matter where we go in our game, uh, we've got this brand new cursor. So yeah, again, really, really simple. But now we're going to take it one step further, as I like to do, do something a little bit more advanced, and we are going to create a custom mouse cursor that's going to be used in a very specific circumstance. So on this last one, I set that cursor as default. There are a number of different values that you can use. So you can use a different cursor for different points in your game, like for a loading screen or for the game menu or main menu. You can use a different cursor or a different cursor animation for each one of those. So right now, um, I'm going to set it, uh, set a new cursor for an in-game uh, menu. So like if you're doing a choice menu, we'll have a different cursor. And this one, we're going to make it animated. So we're going to create it in much the same way. We're going to say define config.mouse. And this one, we're just going to call menu. And this is referring to the in-game you know, choice menu. Just like before, we're going to create a list. This one, we're going to separate it by lines, though. So um, um, it'll make it a little bit easier to read. But we're going to create it in just the same way. So we're going to do a list of tuples. So we're going to say um, GUI slash mouse dash anim one dot PNG. Oops, PNG. There we go. And we're just going to create a different uh, tuple for each one of these um, animation frames. Oh, and I forgot my X and Y offset. So we're still going to set to 0 and 0. And all of these uh, tuples have to be separated by commas because remember, they're in a list. We are creating a list, which a list can contain basically any data type or any variable type separated by commas. Um, and since all of these values are basically the same, just with a different number at the end, I've got eight of them. So I'm just going to copy and paste that eight times. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm just going to go through and change all of those numbers to, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, and 
eight. So there, and that's all you have to do to create an animated one. So it's going to automatically cycle between each one of these. I think it um, does it three frames of animation for each one, because otherwise it would be way too fast. I think that's what it is. Don't quote me on that, but at any rate, if you put that in there, it should, uh, should be fine. So let's go back to our game and we'll see what that looks like. So everything is to, oh, you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to create a menu. So let's do that real quick. I'm just gonna add um, a little bit, little menu uh, section here. So let's say menu, um, check out my animated cursor. So that'll be our menu text. And then we'll just put one choice in there. The cursor is animated. Isn't that cool? There we go. All right, that'll be our really simple, uh, very simple choice menu. Now let's go into the game and see what that looks like. All right, so cursor is still the same. And then when I go to start, now you can see I'm holding my cursor still and it's moving up and down. So it's animated. And then when I hover it over there, that is a different um, uh, type of cursor or a different situation. So you notice my animation stops, it goes back to default, and if I move it off of there, it's animated again. If I click through it, it goes back to the default cursor again. So again, really, really simple to do. And there is, of course, more that you can do with this. I think that's all I'm going to cover for right now. But um, I urge you to check out the uh, checking out the official documentation so you can see the different things that you can do with it. And I'll uh, look up real quick and give you um, an idea of some of the different things that you can do. Sorry, I've got the documentation open on my second monitor. There we go. So um, you can do uh, the default state. You can do uh, instead of you know default or menu, you can put in say, which will uh, which will change the cursor if you're on the say screen. You can change that to with, so it'll change the cursor during transitions. Uh, you can do menu, which is the one we just did. Uh, prompt, so whenever you're prompted for input, it'll change the cursor. You can have it to where it changes if it's on an image map. Um, all sorts of different things. So I'll put a link to the documentation for this in the uh, description as well, so you can check that out. Also check the description for the specific cursor that I'm using. Again, I found a website that has lots of great free cursors that you can use. All you have to do is just attribute the offer or, you know, pay a couple bucks for it. And that will about do it for today. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That keeps me motivated to keep producing more content. And if you have any questions about this specifically or about these data types, if you want to see me cover uh, dictionaries and, you know, lists and tuples and whatnot in more depth later on and specifically how they're used in RenPy, don't forget to ask me about that as well. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.